Today we're talking about 10 things that I stopped buying to improve my style. Hey everybody, it's Kathy. Welcome to Kathy Over 50. Since turning 50, I have really tried to be mindful of the things that I bring into my life and I really try to only buy things anymore that truly bring me joy. I have been guilty so many times of buying things and then they just hang in my closet to never be used. So today I am sharing 10 things that I have quit buying to help improve my style. The first thing that I have stopped buying is fast fashion, mainly t-shirts. They only last a couple of washes before they'll get holes in them or they will lose their shape or they just really start looking ratty looking. That's what I have found. My motto is I would rather go for quality rather than quantity, but I realize that some people still like to shop a lot and, you know, and have a lot of clothes in their closets and that's fine. But for me, this is a decision that I have made. I'm not going to say that I'm never going to buy like a t-shirt, you know, from those companies we know that it's fast fashion, but overall, generally, I'd rather invest in higher quality pieces and I also feel that if you're a plus size woman like me, if I spend a little bit more money on a top, it's probably going to fit me and look more flattering than say lesser quality top that's going to be shapeless and just look really boxy and not flattering. Number two, clothes that need to be ironed. I refuse to iron, I hate it. We received an iron as a wedding gift when we were married. I didn't even take it out of the box. It went to the Salvation Army. I try to buy clothes that you don't have to iron. For my lifestyle, I didn't have to go to an office every day, so I didn't have to worry about my clothes looking crisp. But what I will do instead is steam my clothes. I bought a steamer off of Amazon and I will steam my clothes. And honestly, I much prefer to use it rather than an iron. It's just easier and it's a great way to refresh clothes. And today there are so many options. You can buy blouses and uh, pants, you know, for travel that do not iron and they look great after being packed. The third thing is clothes that I don't feel good in. I mean, clothes that are really tight and uncomfortable, you know, kind of like shapewear I've tried in the past. I refuse to wear shapewear. Maybe one day I'll find some that are comfortable. Um, clothes that are very structured. Like, you won't see me wearing a button-up blouse that often. I do have a few that I like that I've introduced into my wardrobe in the past couple of months. But as a general rule, I prefer pop over blouses. I just find being big chested, I have big shoulders that they just don't look right on me. They're always like popping in the chest area. They just, I feel constricted. I just feel really self-conscious in them. And my philosophy is I shouldn't feel self-conscious in my clothes. I should feel good. I should feel you know, really proud of how I look. So I'm not going to wear clothes anymore that I don't feel good in or comfortable. I've bought clothes before just because I've been standing in front of the mirror kind of debating, do I like it? Do I hate it? And the sales lady comes over and says, oh, that is so cute on you. When, you know, my voice inside my head says, lady, you need to get your eyes checked because this looks awful. But, you know, I didn't want to hurt her feelings, so I would buy it. That is dumb. <laughs> you know, that was a really poor decision on my part. I take ownership. So from now on, unless it wows me, it's not coming home with me. And I guess with age comes wisdom. So, you know, that's one lesson I've learned as I'm getting older. I've also solved the problem of not wanting to hurt the sales lady's feelings by shopping online because the computer doesn't care. Number four, things that don't fit me properly. I touched on one aspect of this uh, in the last point, but have you ever bought clothes for when you lose 10 pounds? I have in the past and, you know, they're still hanging up in my closet from, you know, three, four years ago. I really have come to understand and believe that I need to embrace my body as it is now while I'm on my journey to lose weight. So I want to look good, I want to feel good, so I'm buying clothes for the body that I have at this present moment in time, 
not for, you know, hopefully a month from now when I'm 10 pounds down because odds are it might take me two months to lose the 10 pounds and by then it's a different season or the thing is out of style. Have you done that in the past? Have you bought clothes for whenever you lose X amount of pounds or for whenever you go on a certain trip? Let me know. Am I the only person that has done this? Oh, this one is interesting. Number five, buying all of your clothes from the same store. I have done this. We have a clothing store in Canada. It's not available in the US. It's called Clio. They used to have some really, really beautiful pieces. I would shop there all the time. I would go in every season and, you know, buy a ton of clothes. I was a walking billboard for them. Their clothes fit me. They were nice. They were what I needed, like dressy casual. That is so hard to find. Like sometimes I don't want to be in sweatpants or athletic wear. Sometimes you just want like not a nice fancy blouse, but like a business casual blouse. This store was perfect. But I don't know what happened in the last few years. If they're changing their demographic, I cannot find anything at that store that I like. And I was really sad about it. But you know what? When one door closes, a window opens. And because of them changing their clothing, I have found brands now that I didn't know that I could buy clothes in because I didn't think that, first of all, they made petite clothing. I'm five foot four, so anybody five foot four and under is considered petite. It is your height and not your weight. They also have plus size. So if I can find a store that has plus size petite, that is a bonus. So in the last year, you know, I have found Talbots. I've also shopped twice from Chico's. I'm expecting an order from them, hopefully this week. Uh, but I really, really love Talbots. Now, before you say, oh, well, they're so expensive. They are, but they always have a sale on. And you can become like a rewards member. And if you're, after you spend, I think it's $500, you'll get like a $25 uh, gift credit to use in the store but I never pay full price for my clothes. I always buy them on sale. And I strongly suggest, I don't know what it's like uh, where you live, but where I live, a fast fashion t-shirt can cost $30 here. We don't get them as cheap as like you can in the US. I know in lots of places you get a t-shirt for maybe eight or ten dollars that's really hard to find here so if i'm gonna spend thirty dollars on a fast fashion t-shirt my way of thinking is i'd rather spend 40 on one that is much better quality that i know is going to fit my body shape and size and it's not going to fall apart after a couple of washes so that is my philosophy now on when I buy clothes. Always look for a sale. Never pay full price. I mean, unless you want to, because there's always, always sales. This one's going to be controversial. This is how I feel. You don't have to agree with me. I refuse to wear heels greater than an inch. I had a job where I didn't wear heels. It wasn't required. I was a dairy farmer. So I was not comfortable wearing heels. I actually remember one time I bought myself a nice pair of boots. They had heels about that high. And I got all dressed up because we were going to parent-teacher interviews at my daughter's school. So I'm coming down the stairs, you know, all dressed up in my nice new boots. And I fell down five stairs because I'm not comfortable walking in heels. You know, when I'm walking in heels, I look like a cowboy that's just gotten off a horse. They're not comfortable. And if I'm not comfortable in them, I'm gonna be afraid that I'm gonna fall. And I certainly don't wanna fall and break a hip or a leg or an arm. I'll, I will wear like a kitten heel. I'll wear like a block heel that's maybe like an inch thick, but I am not wearing stilettos. I am not wearing, you know, heels that are two or three inches like if other people can wear them that's great i will enjoy how they look on them but it's a personal decision that i just refuse to wear them maybe this just comes with getting older i dress for myself i dress for my comfort i am not dressing to impress anyone else of course i want to look good and stylish but i think just because i choose to wear you know a shoe that isn't a heel. I don't think that I look horrible. 
or I'm going to be reprimanded. So really, you know, you have to find what works the best for you. Number seven, I am done buying things just because my friend has it. I had this friend years ago, we'd often go shopping and we'd buy a lot of the same things, but we were very different. Like she was even shorter than me and she had a much more petite frame, but I would see something on her and I thought, oh, I really like how that looks on her. So I would go down the rabbit hole and I would buy the same thing, but it didn't look good on me because it wasn't me or it wasn't my style. I'm more quiet and reserved where she was much more outgoing and, you know, liked more loud, vibrant clothes. The same thing with jewelry. I fell into the Pandora thing that was going around, you know, five, 10 years ago, and I started collecting the Pandora charms. They are nice. I like them on other people, but now I have two bracelets full of charms. I never wear them. I just never wear them and they're getting tarnished. And when I look at them, I get stressed and I feel guilty because, you know, they cost a lot of money. Some of them were gifts for my birthday or Christmas for my daughter. I'm never going to wear them because I don't like them. So I really only buy things that I truly love, things that bring me joy and happiness, and things that I know that will fit in with my personality. Have you done that? Have you like gotten into buying things just because, you know, it was all the rage and you didn't want to miss out? Let me know in the comments. Number eight, things that don't go with my personality. It's really important to know who you are, to know what your personality is. I can be very shy and reserved, but I can also be very outgoing. And when I'm with a group of people that I'm comfortable with, I like to have fun, laugh, you know, chat. But if I'm in a room where, you know, seems a little stuffy, I still like to have fun and chat, but it's important for me to feel good about what I'm wearing. And an example of this is, have you ever seen me in a white, blouse. No, you haven't. You may have seen me like in a plaid one and a pink one, but what I'm getting at is I can look at people and they're wearing, you know, a nice white blouse and I can really appreciate and admire that they look really nice in it, but I have yet to find a white blouse that looks good on me. First of all, white makes everything look larger than what it is. So whenever you are short and carrying extra weight, it's just gonna make me look like a marshmallow. Now that's not to say that one day I will find a white blouse that fits me perfectly. Maybe they make them for petite plus size women. I just don't feel like I am myself when I'm wearing that. Does that make sense? Like, do you have a piece of clothing that the moment you put it on, it's like you don't know who you are? Like you almost feel like you're uncomfortable, like you can't be yourself. It may sound strange, but that's how I kind of feel about a white blouse. Now, I did see one that looks really, really nice, and I think that it would um, solve the problem of, you know, my boobs opening up the buttons, and it's by Spanx, but I looked at it and it's so expensive. So maybe after I lose my 50 pounds and I still feel the need to try on a white blouse, maybe I'll give it a go. But for now, I'm just gonna stick with popovers or, you know, the occasional button-up shirt that I actually like and feel that, you know, it helps uh, bring out my personality. I am so over buying multiples of the same item. I'm doing a closet clean out, which I'm going to be sharing with you whenever I finish it. Going through things, it's like, oh my goodness. Did I really need five pair of black spandex leggings to work out in? I didn't know that I owned five pair. How many pair of nude pumps do I need? Probably just one. How many, you know, white or pink or blue t-shirts do I need that are all from the same company? Like I need to learn to shake it up a little bit and at least if I'm gonna buy a blue t-shirt, get it from a different company. So maybe it's a different blue. I don't know, but that's just an example. Like, do you do this? Do you buy multiples of the same thing over and over again? This one is a biggie. 
things that I must talk myself into buying. If it doesn't feel right at the moment, if I try it on and my internal voice is saying, I don't think this is you, you should probably give it a pass, then I should probably give it a pass. I have bought so many things in the past because I didn't want to say it was a local store. I didn't want the shopkeeper to feel bad because I didn't buy it. I wanted to help them out by supporting their store. Or I know that the sales lady works on commission, you know, and she spent a half an hour with me. So I kind of feel like I owe her something. Like that's something that I feel as women, we often fall trapped to. Like we feel if somebody has spent time with us, like we owe them. We have to like reciprocate and do something in return for them. I don't think a lot of men feel that way. Like some may, but I really don't. I think that's a female thing. And that's something that I am trying to work on. You don't have to be rude. You can just say, I'm really sorry, like I couldn't find anything today, but maybe next time I come in, I will find something that works. So yeah, it's really important whenever I buy something now that I see a need for it in my wardrobe that I can see myself wearing it more than once. And I'm not just buying it just because I feel like I have to. So let me know in the comments, have you bought something that you felt pressured into buying or felt that you had to because you didn't want to make somebody feel bad? If you enjoyed this video, you might also enjoy things you should stop buying after turning 50 and what I did to save money. I'll see you over in that video. Bye.